from Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Hello and welcome. Our guest today is conservative commentator Lee Speakerman. Welcome, Lee. Good to have you with us. Great to be here. And on that note, we shall get to our first issue. Issue one, the Bolton Factor. On Thursday, President Trump delivered on your moderator's February 25th prediction and appointed John Bolton to be his new national security advisor. Bolton will take up his office in early April, but not everyone is happy with Trump's choice. Regarding Bolton as a foreign policy hawk, critics fear his accession may signify the Iran deal's demise. Pat, does the arrival of Bolton signal the Iran deal's demise? I think it's hard to see how the Iran deal survives with Pompeo over at state and the president doesn't like it and John Bolton. You know, Tom, this John Bolton is a honest guy, principled guy. He is an uber hawk. He has called for preemptive strikes on North Korea and Iran. He has called for regime change in both countries. This is a victory for the neocons and the war party, quite frankly. And I don't see how the Iran deal really survives with the kind of opposition it's got and has already had. And more than that, I think uh, we're in for a much more hawkish foreign policy than Trump advertised. Al Alan, does, it, does, does it, but does it mean, though, that the, he's given up on the Iran deal, President Trump, do you think? Or are they still trying to reform it? I don't think you can ever determine what President Trump is going to do <laughs> until the actual moment. Right. And I actually, I think that Pompeo has some... He's a smart guy, and I think he, he has his eye on getting a deal with North Korea. And if you pull out of the Iran deal, that kind of ends anything that might happen with North Korea. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Pat on the, on the Bolton appointment. Uh, he, he is a return to the days of Dick Cheney and preemptive strikes and believing that you can bomb Iran and you can have a, a, a military strike on North Korea, and that solves our problems. I think. The possibility of a military exchange, a nuclear military <laughs> exchange with North Korea, rises, mm. and so does the possibility of confrontation with, with Iran. Yeah. Unless Bolton somehow just transforms himself, and I, um, mm. if he shaves the mustache, maybe. Yeah, but, <laughs> I thought that would save but, us. Trump didn't like right, the mustache. But Lee, Lee, what do you think about this? I think he's a conservative, not a neoconservative. I think there's a big distinction there. Uh, even the New York Times, not exactly an admirer of the Trump foreign policy or anything about President Trump, has called him fiercely intelligent, or which he is. That doesn't hurt. But with the balance that you have now with Bolton, Pompeo, Mattis, you probably have a triumvirate um, for national security and foreign affairs that's the most formidable we've ever had or among the strongest we've had in, since World War II. So you're a fan of this, I'm a, I'm a big fan, and I think it sends a great signal uh, to North Korea via China. Yeah. The, very, the very fact that China mm -hmm. uh, fears him a little bit, uh, a lot of this uh, talk about a potential preemptive strike and all of that is really aimed at China, not North Korea. Yeah. And because China's the one that's got to right. put the pressure on North Korea. Clarence, They're not what listening. Do you, what do you make of it? it uh, I met John Bolton. I talked to him a couple of times. I was surprised at how cordial he is. He is very intelligent, uh, but he tends to, to take a de default position toward the hawkish side, no question about it. He, he and Colin Powell didn't get along over at the Pentagon because of this. Right. And I, I like to think maybe he just ble believes in talking big but carrying a small stick. Right. Because, <laughs> because, yeah. because I, can't, I can't believe he thinks. I, I mean, Steve Bannon said it, said it. You know, there's no way to have a. Yeah a war with South Korea or, or North Korea. He, uh, Bolton is a skilled bureaucratic infighter, but he could not get confirmed by the Senate when he was up okay. for a position, George. Mm -hmm. he, right. he had to get a recess appointment. And as the National Security yeah. Advisor, he has proximity to this president who always listens to the last person he talked to. I think Bolton can reinforce can, Trump's Tom. worst yeah, insight. Uh, well, I want to finish my thought, please. Uh, quick, we quick. have an autocratic president who is getting cornered by the Russia probe and by three women's lawsuits. Right. And what do autocrats do? They okay. look for a military adventurism. And I think that's the All danger right. that Bolton we uh, need brings. To, we have many issues. Got to get on. We got to get on. Issue two, Trump versus Mueller. Once again decrying a quote unquote witch hunt, President Trump this week launched a series of Twitter attacks on special counsel Robert Mueller. Mr. Mueller is investigating possible collusion between the Trump presidential campaign and Russia. But the president says the investigation is wholly partisan in nature. Still, some Republicans fear that the president's tweets imply that he is preparing to dismiss Mueller. If the president does so, Republicans like Lindsey Graham say it will mean the end of his presidency. And note this interesting factoid. 
On Thursday, John Dowd, a top lawyer representing Trump in relation to Mueller's investigation, resigned. Pat, Eleanor has just suggested that this you know, appointment of John Bolton might be an effort to somewhat distract away from the Mueller investigation. But what should President Trump do? Should he fire Mueller? And if he fires Mueller, should he be impeached? No, he's not going to be impeached because the Republicans control the House, and if they did that, they'd be committing suicide. Lindsey Graham has said it might happen. Well, Lindsey Just... Graham represents Lindsey Graham. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look, but you ought to take a look at Mueller. I don't think he should, but I do think this, the Jigenova appointment to the president's political, I mean, legal staff is the appointment really of a wartime consigliore, if you right. want to call it that. And I think it, it indicates a willingness of Trump to move off a legal to a political strategy to make political war, if you will, on the special prosecutor, and that inevitably I, happens. I used to think if, if the president fired Sessions and um, Rosenstein and everybody else in order to get at Mueller, that that would be the tripwire that would get the Republican Congress to respond. But they have no backbone at all. All they think about is the November elections. And so I'm, I, I almost think that he could get away with anything in terms of the politics of the Congress, but not with the politics of the American people. That would look so suspicious. I mean, that this man is hiding something he doesn't want the rest of us to see. Lee, Mueller, is a firing coming? Mueller should be fired. I've said it for months. The investigation should be mm -hmm. shut down. The way to do it is to combine that with naming another special counsel to focus on the real crimes, which is the DOJ and FBI malfeasance <laughs> that we've become aware of, the Hillary Clinton emails and the pay-for-play that were deleted from that. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the key. Uh, he's got to get rid of Mueller, shut that down, and that is going to be the way that you wage war. Uh, do, and you know, the is wait, a wait, perfect guy to help, say, help with that strategy. I, I, I just want to know who's in charge of the FBI conspiracy that's going, mm -hmm. going on over there. Well, I think most of I think it hasn't changed from probably so. Hoover. No, this is, uh, uh, unfortunately, it has <laughs> not. That's, that's worth another show. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> but you know very well, very little has changed. No, no. The, the the thing is, impeachment is a political process. It's not a legal process. Right. So it depends right up front. How many votes do you have in Congress? Right, right now, Trump has got the votes. But we, this is also a, a midterm election year. Right. Mm -hmm. Eleanor's right. There's, you're risking backlash, which we're already seeing happen. And all you do is make yourself look even more suspicious by shutting down. And let, let, let me ask. Let me ask. Yeah. I want to yeah, ask. Yeah, wait, wait. Say, no, no, no. I'm the moderator. No, I want to well, ask Pat. Very. Let's talk about uh, issues. Uh, let us talk about. Well, let me ask a question to Pat. Pat, do you think the Republican Party though is the, the, the principle here of the rule of law, which is why you're saying don't fire him. Wait a minute now. This is just it. If it's the rule of law, Trump, there was no collusion in hacking those emails. That was the assignment. Mueller and his crowd have moved far beyond that. That is why I think it's going to be the right thing to do to move this into a political venue. And I agree with you 100 percent. The battle that's going on primarily from Fox News and those guys to in, get an independent counsel to go after Comey and the FBI guy that just right got away. fired, yeah. that's the, the right FBI thing to do. The FBI is one of the most respected institutions in America. But it shouldn't be. And, and frankly, the White House is leadership. now, excuse me, the White House is now trying to undermine the integrity of our law enforcement It's undermined its own integrity. And the fact that uh, Mr. Dowd resigned, uh, that was because he was telling the president that he should not testify because it would be perjury. Also, he might tell what the truth. What did he say? It's because and he was factual. Trump says he wants to testify, Will which he? shows he's living in the same parallel universe that you but are. You know, the real problem here was Comey at the FBI. It's not Mueller. Mueller right. inherited an investigation which I believe was corrupt. Okay. All right. All right. We're moving on. Comey's we're, book. Uh, that All right. Right. We'll wait for the book. That makes issue, it a we're going on war. issue issue three from the book of Buchanan. We have a tremendous intellectual property theft situation going on. Channeling a certain conservative thinker this week, President Trump announced $50 billion in new tariffs targeting China. The president says the tariffs will deter China from continuing intellectual property theft and defeat its unfair subsidies to domestic manufacturers. But while analysts say that intellectual property theft costs the U.S. economy hundreds of billions of dollars each year, some are concerned that the president's new tariffs will spark a trade war. After all, China is now preparing its own tariffs targeting U.S. agricultural exports. Question. If China retaliates, will the U.S. economy suffer a slowdown? Clarence. 
I think uh, China is going to try to tailor this as much as they can towards specific industries that are going to hurt, uh, uh, especially hurt, uh, politically hurt Trump. I would imagine uh, they're looking at steel for well, yeah, agriculture is a very important one at mm -hmm. this point, and uh, I think. Uh, I was amused by by the uh, ability of China to uh, cut off steel toward that, that, that helps the construction industry uh, that uh, uh, definitely benefits Donald Trump and, and, and his Tom, industries. You talk about a trade war. In the last two decades, China has run up four trillion dollars in trade surpluses at our expense. Three hundred and seventy-five billion dollars last year alone. We lost six thousand six million manufacturing jobs in the first decade of this century. 55,000 factories. If you look at what's happened to America, we've been the victim of a trade war. Now, I think this is going to be a tough battle, and the Chinese are up to it. The question is, are the American people up to some of the sacrifices yeah. that are going to no. be required Walmart, to get economic Walmart, independence back? Walmart is basically a Chinese uh, merchandising market, yeah. <laughs> and, and that has served many, many millions of Americans, many, many millions of the Trump base very well. So plunging into Not this, as long as a plunging good job, into though. this, this pre the, plunging into this, the president can do real damage to the global economy. And uh, it's the, for the American economy, he was hired. There are lots right. of other big. people who were, who who China can trade with, and China is turning into a huge market that is going to open up further. Name to another it. market in the they're world, evolving, which is twenty-one billion dollars. They're evolving. Right. This is not trillion. how you wage economic war. All right. Well, Lee, we, we, as Pat pointed out, we have nearly a four hundred billion dollar trade uh, deficit with China. If they want to retaliate, let's see how that works out for yeah. them. But what about when the T-shirt prices <laughs> increase? It, listen, the jobs are more important. We talked about South Walmart. East Asia and Guatemala. I'm a big, I'm a big Walmart <laughs> supporter. I shop at a great place. But the average non-managerial employee at Walmart makes $14 an hour. The average factory worker right. in the United States makes $24 an hour. Right. $20,000 a year difference. Okay. And okay. that is a direct result of All our right. ridiculous All trade. Right. Okay, we're on to the next. Must go on to the next issue. The issue too. four, Facebook and the FTC. Executives of Facebook and data firm Cambridge Analytica found themselves in deep water this week when Britain's Channel 4 News aired video of undercover meetings that showed the data firm offering controversial services such as entrapment. Why does this matter for Facebook? Because Mark Zuckerberg's social media giant is now under Federal Trade Commission investigation for allowing the data of perhaps 50 million of its users to be transferred to Cambridge Analytica without authorization. Pat, is Zuckerberg finished? President Zuckerberg, <laughs> his political <laughs> career is behind him now. But let me say this, this I, I don't look at this with all that gravity. Look, this is voter profiling. It's getting more and more sophisticated. It's going on and on. You got Facebook. We're not going back. I, you know, it's not like the old days. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to be able to do these sort of Do you of have a Facebook yeah. page? No. I, well, maybe well, I, you, Eleanor, do you have a Facebook page? I have a Facebook page, but I certainly don't live on it. But right. a lot of people do, uh, and young people though are saying Facebook is yesterday. So he, right. but but he has a business model here where he exploits user data and makes a, lo a lot of money. I mean, he, Facebook is has more money than most countries. Mm. So this is a hugely significant corporation, and the capacity for doing ill will and for it being a merchandiser of hate has been revealed and he's got to deal with it. He's got to come testify in Capitol Hill. The automobile executives came and they took it when they were under the gun and he, he's, he's got to do that. He's we're, no longer the white hat princeling who's you know ushered in the, the, the brave new world. When President okay. Obama's, when his campaign ended, one of his digital gurus admitted that they, during the campaign, sat down with Facebook people mm -hmm. and that they were doing things, this is a quote or a paraphrase, they were doing things they know they weren't supposed to do. This was the President yeah. Obama campaign. That, so the point yeah. is, we, the, we're talking the, about a paradigm that may not even work. A lot of us say it's snake oil, what Cambridge Analytica has been doing. But you're talking about aggregating names, friends, and likes, uh, and, and the voters are that malleable. Well, well, let's, it well, that's President, let me ask President Page a question here. Is President Zuckerberg done? <laughs> uh, Mark Zuckerberg, we've got to remember this is the 12th time in the last 10 years that Mark Zuckerberg has made a major apology for something like this uh, in which uh, he said we're going to change our ways. And, and they did afterwards, and, and now they have something more to apologize for. 
He's still got two billion mm -hmm. unique users. That's the population of China plus twice the population of the United States. Facebook is not going away overnight. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is, p is politically naive, but, but quite business savvy. And, and this is a, a, a public relations deal but for him. He has him. a public relations just, uh, tin ear because yeah, I think the apology exactly. was But really Americans weak. don't care. Yeah. Americans are yeah. not going to oh. get wild about <laughs> this because there is no expectation of privacy when you're, when you're putting no. likes out there in public. I think young people, though, are becoming but more Concern. Well, they're concerned. Concern. They don't trust anything. Right they that. don't, and they're right. They, they don't trust yeah, anything. Well, but it's a great platform Clarence, overall. Clarence. I was, was going to say one thing we shouldn't miss, though. Though, though is, is there were there there was uh, what. Uh, 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 misguidance, if you will, as far as how my data okay. was going to be used after I s filled out the right. questionnaires. Yeah. Right. No the key, the key is, the, and, 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 I just said that's no fine. transparency. Well, the yeah. key is yeah. disclosure, right, well, we, not yeah, regulation. Gotta, okay. Disclosure, get on. not regulation. We're going on. When we come back, Saudi crown princes and autonomous cars. And all, as always, tell your friends they can watch us anytime from Sunday 1 p.m. Eastern at mclaughlin.com. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you in part by Eric.org. With gridlock in Washington, states are stepping in to mandate paid sick and family leave policies, creating a compliance nightmare for companies with a nationwide workforce. The ERISA Industry Committee is fighting back. Learn how we can help your company at Eric.org. Hi, I'm Pat Coleman from Jim Coleman Cadillac. This year, we're proud to celebrate our 50th anniversary serving our customers in Bethesda and all across the D.C. area. For three generations, our family's been committed to being the best in luxury automotive sales and service, and we invite you to join us in celebrating the half-century mark by taking advantage of our 50th anniversary specials all year long. We want to earn your business, and we hope to welcome you to the Coleman family because our cars are great, but our people are better. Issue five, MBS comes to Washington. $533 million, $525 million, that's peanuts for you, should have increased it. $880 million. President Trump brought out the charts as he welcomed Mohammed bin Salman to the White House on Tuesday. Trump hopes that the 32-year-old Saudi crown prince will increase his US investments. But bin Salman's plans for the future were also on the Washington agenda. Slated to replace his ailing father, King Salman, on the throne, the crown prince is leading a major reform of Saudi Arabia's economy and society. Steps taken thus far include allowing women to drive, imprisoning dissenting clerical and political voices, and building a supermodern city named Neom. Yet bin Salman's youthful smile also hides a harder edge. Determined to constrain Iran, the crown prince is leading an aggressive campaign against Iranian-supported proxies in Yemen. That conflict has cost thousands of civilian lives. Clarence, I bet our namesake is laughing from heaven at that opening sequence with Trump and the charts. But well, let me ask you, should we be doubling down on bin Salman as the president seems to be doing? Well, uh, there, there's serious concerns about human rights violations, uh, uh, both in his internal uh, cleaning up, if you will, mm -hmm. of the uh, aristocracy and also that war in Yemen yeah. is very troubling. And, and that is a... And there was uh, a vote in the Senate this week that the yeah. country didn't... <laughs> yeah, 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 it's kind of like, like doing Syria by proxy here yeah. for, for us. And, 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 so you and, say be cautious. Our hands shouldn't be dirty in, uh, yeah. in that kind but of situation. Yemen yeah. is a yeah. horrific yeah. humanitarian disaster. and. MBS is the prime architect of that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the steps he's taken on reform, it's a pretty low bar, and I don't think he's done anything about the exporting of that toxic Mojave, Wahhabi uh, ideology outside mm -hmm. of the country, which gave rise to the 9-11 uh, uh, bombers. So you say the optimism uh, is... I, I, I'd be very wary, wary mm -hmm. of him. Well, I, think okay. we, <clears throat> I don't think we got any other choice to go with him. But look, this Yemen war, I mean, they're saying it's an Iranian operation. The Houthis overthrew that government long before any Iranians got in there. I think he's got himself bogged down in Saudi Arabia's Vietnam. I think he's taken on an enormous amount. I think we got to go with the guy because he's the only guy there. But I'll tell you, he's just taken on an awful lot of enemies. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if something happens in Saudi Arabia mm. about him. Well, he's, a, he's, yeah. our, he's our bulwark against Iran, as, you, as you've said. 
Uh, you know, our, speaking of Iran, ironically, you know, people have said that uh, compared to Saudi Arabia, Iran is Switzerland <laughs> in terms of human rights. But the upshot is that uh, Saudi Arabia is absolutely crucial in fighting and taking on Iran in the Middle East, right. fighting without engaging militarily. MBS, if we're do that. MBS will be behind Bolton and all the folks right. that want right. to go right. to Which war, is a good thing. as yeah. will Bibi Netanyahu and the neocons and the liberal interventionists. <laughs> as well. This is why. You got the a whole coalition. The interventionists are not going to be behind Bolton. Well, they'll I, be I behind. I speak for them. They are, behind, <laughs> they are behind battling with Iran. You read the Washington Post. I, I Is there any voices there no, that aren't? No, the liberal well, interventionists that. are for keeping the Iran yeah. deal pat. Well, we, <laughs> right, should, we right. should not. You know, you should never fall in love with a foreign leader. They'll always let you down. Um, but the yeah. upshot is. We've got to have them solidly working with us against Iran, Israel, Saudi Arabia, United States is the only counterbalance to Iran. Right. We've got we've got to Let's stop quick, that and, and the Wahhabism. Alan, they've got Alan, to put let me ask, Wahhabism. Uh, very quickly, young people in Saudi Arabia, large young population. If there's any effort at reform, isn't that important for us so they don't become the next ISIS? Uh, yeah, they're very afraid that that uh, that the country's going to be fall victim to the to the Arab Spring, if you will. Yeah. But they have done nothing. That you have you know hundreds of very wealthy princes living high on right. the hog, right. and then you have a population right. Right. that's basically well, bought okay. off to stay quiet. Um, very quick. MB, he, he bought a yacht that he saw on the Riviera for four hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah. This is a reformer. No, okay. Right. All right. Hey, hey, moving on. <laughs> Issue six. Where's the driver? In for a minute. Efforts by ride-sharing firm Uber to develop driverless cars suffered a blow last Sunday when a pedestrian in Tempe, Arizona was hit and killed by one of its autonomous vehicles. While the Tempe Police Department does not believe the Uber vehicle or its supervising driver are to blame for the incident, some are arguing for more regulations to manage driverless research. Others disagree. They claim that the safeguards in place are significant and that new regulations would risk Uber, Google and others relocating their driverless research projects abroad. Question. McLaughlin Group view it. Ethan Hatami asks, can we imagine a future where some individuals ride around in autonomous vehicles while plebeians stand by and risk being killed by their wealthier neighbors' self-serving algorithms, Lee? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I don't have a good answer to that. <laughs> but I think autonomous cars are a crucial part of our future. And if we see mm -hmm. that, overregulate that, if we poison the seed before it can sprout, China is going to simply right. dominate this crucial area of technology. There, China's trying to build a massive fleet of autonomous cars. They should be electrified. Elon Musk has said he believes human drivers are going to be banned yeah. in the future. The Buchanan tariffs will take care of those Chinese cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's plebeians, I believe. Yeah. But look, this oh, is thank coming. Thank you for the correction. Yeah. This is coming. There's no doubt about it. There's going to be, just like the original automobiles, tremendous number of accidents. Try to minimize it. But you can't stop the future from arriving. Yeah, yeah, should be. Uh, yeah, yeah, cars are actually safer than the ones propelled by humans. Yeah, exactly. Someone who was just a victim of somebody, of a distracted driver. Um, uh, in this particular incident in, in right. Arizona, I think, there was a person in the car who was distracted. So yeah, so here to stay. It's human error. Oh, yeah, well, here to, here to stay. Statistically, yeah, they are safer, uh, but and they are here to stay. But this is going to be a generational thing, though. For those of us who are really wire, hardwired now to, 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 to love driving a car and, and having control, it's going to be a, 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 a very difficult adjustment. And what you, you young people, though, are, are going to be in better shape to adjust to that. But there was also a headline this past week, though, that, that, that Uber uh, may have been fudging their own statistics mm. as far as the reliability is concerned. So more, there's more to come on that. And story, very quickly, we're going to do a roundtable here. What do people think about President Trump's deregulation of drone research? He deregulated from Obama. Good or bad? I think it's terrific. Pat. Good. Eleanor. No. Bad. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. Sooner or later. <laughs> okay. I, I say it's good, but on that broad note and six issues, and I think we'll liberate the panel next week from six issues, <laughs> we will be right back with predictions. Hi, I'm Pat Coleman from Jim Coleman Cadillac. This year, we're proud to celebrate our 50th anniversary serving our customers in Bethesda and all across the D.C. area. For three generations, our family's been committed to being the best in luxury automotive sales and service, and we invite you to join us in celebrating the half-century mark by taking advantage of our 50th anniversary specials all year long. We want to earn your business, and we hope to welcome you to the Coleman family because our cars are great, but our people are better. 
The McLaughlin Group is brought to you in part by Eric.org. Is your company trying to provide health and retirement benefits to workers across the country? The ERISA Industry Committee beats back taxes, mandates, and compliance burdens that make it harder for companies to provide employee benefits. Learn how ERIC supports large employers at ERIC.org. Generation Hope is a nonprofit organization that helps D.C. area teen moms and dads become college graduates. We provide them with tuition assistance, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and crisis support until they graduate. A lot of crises along the way, there have already been a lot of crises. My mom passed away, and I do everything for my mom in memory of her. I dedicate this graduation to her on Mother's Day. When a young parent earns their college degree, the likelihood that that child will go to college goes up and they will earn $1 million more over the course of their lifetime. Naraya Omar. It's a tremendous return on investment. And all of these issues that we care about, homelessness, child welfare, poverty, this really makes a difference and it changes lives. Congratulations. Have a wonderful day. Predictions, Pat. Next week is Holy Thursday, Good Friday, but in the Middle East, in Israel, it is Passover, and they're planning an awful lot of demonstrations against the Israelis by the Palestinians, confrontations on the West Bank, and in Jerusalem. Mm. Eleanor. Bolton is a skilled bureaucratic infighter. He knows how to work the system, and we know what he believes. If he wants to carry through on those beliefs, the potential of a military clash with Iran and North Korea just rose significantly. Okay, Lee. Well, as you, as you heard earlier, I think that uh, Mueller should be fired and the inve investigation should be shut down, the so-called Russia collusion that it didn't exist. I think that if President Trump does that, and even if he doesn't, but if he fires Mueller, it will be a net political positive one year from now or yeah. seven months from now. It will be a net political right. positive and it'll gin up his base That's a big and one. not hurt him anymore with the rest. <laughs> All right. I think, I think President Trump's failure to get funding for his wall this, mm. uh, in this last round, his best chance is for getting the wall of pass for his presidency. A big omnibus bill, bill there that, uh, yep. that a lot of Republicans or conservatives are upset about. How do you, yes. you think he should have signed it, though? Oh, he, he, he really had no choice. Okay. I'm sure he could have brought him back for a couple of weeks. Point. All right. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, my little yeah. prediction. In the coming weeks, I predict the bloodshed in the Balkans will increase as sectarian tensions again boil over. Pay attention to that. It's an undercover story. And here's a random fact. 24 years ago today, the last U.S. military personnel were withdrawn from Somalia. Their evacuation followed the infamous Black Hawk Down or bottle, uh, Battle of Mogadishu incident. In particular, we remember two Delta operators, Randy Shugart and Gary Gordon, who died in that battle after very courageously requesting permission to save a downed U.S. aircrew. Thank you very much, panelists, for an entertaining and stimulating and long-issued discussion today. We hope you will join us next week. But until then, make sure to follow us on Twitter at McLaughlin Group and visit our webpage, mclaughlin.com, where your friends can watch this show. Auf Wiedersehen!